Hey YouTube, welcome to another project with Life with ALAC. Um, sitting here in my home office. Uh, it actually functions as a few things. It's my home office, it's a guest bedroom, and slowly converting it over to a YouTube studio. So with me spending a lot more time in this room, one of the things that's really getting on my nerves is uh, the project behind me, which is the way that the TV is hung. So when I first got into the house, I kind of had to do things a little bit quicker. Uh, so I did install the TV, but I never really um, hit the wires how I should have or how I like to. So um, today, like I said, might be spending a little bit more time in there. That's the project that we're gonna be working on. So uh, join me as we go through this process. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna be using the kit that I've purchased and installed multiple times in the house before. It's actually from a company called Echo Gear. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description. But once again, it's just a kit off the shelf, off of Amazon that you can install. Uh, you don't need to do, uh, you don't need to hire an electrician rather uh, because it comes with a really nice jumper cable system. Everything's in wall rated, so it's safe. Um, so join me on this. All right, so one of the very first things we're gonna do is uh, I get everything disassembled here. I'm gonna um, unplug everything I got at the bottom here, take the TV off, uh, so that way we got some room to work with. Now I should add, I may have a few extra holes behind here. Uh, I can't remember or not, but I believe I installed more than one bracket on this wall. So that'll be a reason. So for this project, once again, I need the kit. Stud finder. Electrical tape. Pencil. Screwdriver, flathead. Fish tape. Measuring tape. Here's a spare HDMI cable. And a cordless drill. Unbox the kit. So 
this kit. Get the instructions. This is one of the adapters and faceplate. The extension cord. This is a unit that actually goes behind the wall. Once again, it's got the fire rated cabling. And then this kit is nice. It actually comes with the tool. So that way you can actually install and, sorry, it comes with the tool so that way you can um, cut the holes for these to lock in place. So it's already pre-measured and everything. You don't have to go out and grab another hole saw. It comes with it in this particular kit. So we're gonna go ahead and get this assembled. Like so. So that part is all set up and ready to go. And once again, here's a list of instructions. So, like I said, we're already gonna start. I'm already taking this off because I've installed a TV already um, here. I know I have studs uh, here and I have a stud here. So for mounting the hole, I'm gonna wanna go in between that area. This should be free space in here. Uh, for my house, I do have some insulation added inside. So we will run into that. And then you always, obviously you always want to pay attention to what's on the other side of the wall. So in my case, um, I have a bathroom, but um, because we had this house built, I know that the water is actually on this side of the wall. So all we have electrical here and here to worry about in between this space should be free. So you always want to make sure you're paying attention to what's behind the wall. Um, if at all possible. So there are different tools that you can buy that can kind of help you sense if there's maybe an HVAC, if there's electrical, uh, if there's water lines behind the wall. Uh, like I say, in my particular case, I don't need that because um, watching the house go up, I know exactly what's behind uh, these, uh, behind the drywall in my instance. So what I'm going to be doing is doing a measurement, make sure I know exactly where I want the hole to come out. Uh, at the bottom as well as along the top here uh, there is a maximum distance uh, it's somewhere right around five feet or so that's in the instructions there I'll get the exact number uh, flashing on the screen uh, but you want to make sure that you're not exceeding that dimension so that way you can jump that out of it correctly so with that So in my case, I don't need this to be like perfect, but I'm gonna just take a rough little sketch here, uh, roughly where the outlet's gonna, where I'd like it to be. Uh, like I said, I don't need to be 
exactly perfect, but this allow it to get relatively close. So once again, like I said, in my case, I know I should have stud here, stud here, still use a stud finder, just gotta double check and make sure that the area should be free is free. So that's the stud there. Nothing there. And then that's our stud thing. So with that, uh, taking the measurement there, you can't always double check. Go down to where the outlet is supposed to be at the bottom. So in my case, four feet. And just make sure that you don't exceed the dimension. Uh, I did double check and it is five feet. So that's the magic number, five feet. You wanna stay less than five feet. So once again, it's my rough spot there. I know that I'm clear. Take my drill and install the hole saw here. So, got the hole saw here. Gotta make sure we drill our pilot hole here. center it off of this hole so that way the hole coming out at the bottom is roughly in line with that so be right back gonna get centered here use this to make sure we are plumb which we both holes now we can fish the cable through so for now i'm actually going to take my screwdriver and pop this little cover off and i'm going to need to tighten that up later so pop that off now that just unsnaps like so so then once again 
that's the decorative cover these little wings screw in place and that's what actually holds the unit in place you're gonna get that into the wall take your cable through and kind of go from there so if we get lucky we'll be able to fish this right through and not need the, the tape there but if not this is where the fishing tape comes in handy to help you fish your wires through so hopefully this is straight shot we're going straight down here so I'm gonna feed this down So, don't feel it there, that's all right, because this allows me to show you guys how to use the fishing tape. So, we're just going to back this back out, and actually, loosen this up. We'll just use our fishing tape. fishing tape we want to pull this up this has a little end on it I found that this doesn't actually most of the applications I've used it doesn't work all the way so what I like to do is just fish this down so pull this out longer than what you need uh, we'll tuck this down and then we'll tape everything and then pull it back up Sorry, for this application, I actually need to go the opposite way. So we're gonna actually feed this from the bottom up, come through the top hole, so that way we can actually pull the cable back down. And I'll show you that. So in my case, I'm gonna tuck some of this insulation back, and I'm gonna try to keep the cable hugging up against the drywall. So that way it's not going through the insulation to hopefully make that a little bit easier. Like I said, if you don't have insulation in between your interior wall, then this might be a little bit easier. So we're gonna feed a good chunk through. And now we're gonna come up top here and see if we can feel for it. Yeah. 
try this again. And that happens quite a bit where it gets stuck in the insulation. It makes it a little bit more difficult to find. So we will try it again. So, I can actually see the electrical line from here feeding over. But this is the top here. So, once again, because we are feeding this connection down, I'm going to tape this end to the fish tape and then pull this through. This is normally the most difficult part of the install. It's important here, you don't want to over tape, but at the same time, you don't want to use too little tape. So that way, when you fish this through, because it does have to bind, well, it may bind up against the insulation. And what you don't want to do is have it come off. So if you can, you want to kind of help guide it so kind of pushing this through at the same time that you're pulling, I found has yielded the best results. So I'm feeding down at the same time that I'm pulling my fishing tape back out. So I can feel a little bit of resistance. I'm starting to bind on some insulation. have here but there we are through so we got our fishing tape through we got this in so what I'm gonna do is finish pulling this down So I'm actually going to redo this part. No fault of echoes, error on my part, but the easier way to actually do this um, is to fish this HDMI cable with the power cable. So as a result, I took my, I had to take this back out of the wall and the little plastic tabs ended up being stuck behind the insulation. So I have to go to like Home Depot or something and uh, probably buy a different 
retro box that has the little ears that open up. So that way I could put that um, on here so that way this fits uh, flush. Uh, I won't show you guys that. Like I said, that's that's not part of standard install. That's just a mistake that I made. So I'm gonna tape these together. And then once again, I'm gonna use my fish tape to feed this up. So that way I could pull this down. So that way I could pull the HDMI and that power connection all together. together and once again you want to make sure you have proper amount of tape on there not too much where you're kind of wasting it but at the same time you're going to be pulling these pretty thick cables through insulation so you want to make sure you have enough tape on there where if you do pull it and it gets stuck it does not come loose behind the wall and like i said what i'm going to be doing is feeding the cable down at the same time i'm pulling out One of my little tabs. Exactly what I warned you guys about happened to me where I didn't have enough tape on there, but it did come off. I was able to feed quite a bit through, so we'll see if we can still grab it and recover. heard that third tab behind the wall there it fell all the way through so I have two out of the three tabs recovered 
so I'll see if I can find a way to secure it. Sometimes projects don't go as planned, but that doesn't mean we don't complete them or give up. These are minor things that can happen. So, like I said, in my case, I wanted to make sure I did this right. So, caused myself a little bit more work. Um, like I said, there's only have two out of the three little tabs that hold this on. So gonna have to figure out a way to secure that what that's fine because we don't want to have to all right so this time we got a little bit more tape on HDMI and there is the out. Oh. All right, we got them both. Right. So, we'll untape these, move on to the next stage. So, 
actually going to feed this through here. I'm just going to leave a little bit out at the bottom because there's nothing to connect it to. And then for the top HDMI, I'm not going to feed it through this wire channel. And in my case, I bought a 13 foot HDMI cable. So I'm just going to coil this up and then put most of this, just like tuck it behind the TV. But for now it's fine. And then we're going to install the two ears that we have. So in my case, until I can make it to Home Depot and get the something where I can rig up the last tab, I'm just gonna kind of kind of tuck this, but not to the point where it's all the way in, because that's what happened last time. So what we're now gonna do here is we got that's the HDMI cable one in that we're gonna coil up. Now we can install our bottom one. So for this, once again, got to pop this face plate off. into here and then you just screw that face plate back on and that locks that in place So if you're not comfortable, don't use a power drill for that. Make sure you use just a hand screwdriver. So now we're gonna feed the other end of this HDMI through this slot. So that way, if we get a device that we need to plug in, we'll have that in. And now we just gotta put, tuck everything back into the wall. Please. 
right to see. All right, we'll make sure we have the right orientation. And we do. Pop that in. Try to mount this vertical. this through so now we have hdmi snap that in just gonna have to wipe this up from low residual from the electrical tape so this side is ready to go now at this point the last thing technically to complete this install if it, like i said if it wasn't for a little gear thing you got going on up there would be to install this jumper cable so this is why this kit is so cool and so safe is because what we're actually doing is we're just jumping power from that outlet over to this. So what we're gonna do here is plug in our power here. And then we would just plug in our power there. And what that does is takes power from that outlet, sends it through here, and then with the cable behind there, it sends power up there where you can just plug your TV. So for now, we're gonna pause. So that way I can make sure I get the right stuff to fix this up up there. And then we'll come back and button this up. All right, back. So I gotta, I gotta get some tie wraps or cable ties, depending on where you're from, what you call them. Uh, but essentially we're gonna tie this up here. ideal situation this may go you know someplace behind like a cabinet where you would not see as much of that wire uh but for what i'm doing like i said i'll probably kind of hide this down uh we'll find a creative way to hide that cable as much as possible but uh it'll definitely be a lot better than what we have here so for the main viewing area we won't see any of that cable coming down so i'm gonna grab some supplies to finish tying that up We'll be done. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. Um, so here's kind of the final product there. So got this jumped over to that. As you can see, that cable was pretty long. So probably what I'll do is uh, either order, order something from Amazon or go to Home Depot or Lowe's or something. I'll probably just get a small little 12 inch jumper wire to kind of go from that outlet there um but other than that this one's uh pretty wrapped up as you can see no more cables there um so overall looking pretty good uh i do realize obviously it looks like that tv's mounted pretty high that is uh intentional um i kind of repurposed this tv a couple different times so it's a little bit too large for this room for one and that outlet's kind of in the way so at some point i'm going to get a, a full motion mount where i'll be able to pull the tv out from the wall and drop it down a little bit uh, but for now i wanted to make sure i mounted it high and out of the way of that outlet uh, so that is intentional in case you guys are asking in the comments uh same thing here uh, i should have mentioned this earlier but Eventually, what I want to do is uh, I've seen some kind of cool ideas where people actually like mount their Apple TVs just like down on the, the ground there. So they have some little holders where you could either like Velcro it like behind the TV or just mount it at the bottom. So I haven't 100 percent figured out if I'm going to replace this unit yet. 
and I ended up uh, replacing that unit. This one looks overall a lot better. This is a little console table that I ended up picking up from a local Target here. Uh, put some baskets on here to allow me to have a place for some blankets and some miscellaneous things to go. Locates the printer, the Echo Dot that I have here, as well as the fan. So I was able to hide the wires relatively well with this particular unit, uh, which you can see here, just using some tie wraps and things of that nature just to clean it up. Uh, but overall, aesthetically, feel really good with how this turned out. Uh, everything does have a home, and it actually freed up a little bit of space that I had in that corner. So really happy with how this turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, and come back for another video sometime soon. Thank you. Take care.